hopefully Aaron will join us shortly. Um, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. So we'll call to order the March 25th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. Mike, do we need to review Zoom procedures? No, I was hoping we'll all play nice. Okay. So I haven't shut us down. Okay. I always hope that too. Um, all righty. Well, we have to approve the agenda. So if we can get a motion to approve the agenda in a second. I'm, uh, excuse me. I'm on a planning commission meeting. So I'm talking to me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I move, move to approve the agenda. Okay, we have a motion from Ariane. We have a second. Uh, I'll second that. Oh. Oh, I think I heard Gabe first. So. I'll get Gabe, Gabe. I'll give it to Gabe. He can have that. <laughs> All right. Gabe gets a win. So motion to approve the agenda from Ariane, a second from Gabe. Those in favor of approving the agenda, say aye. 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 Okay. Agenda approved. Um, it says comments from the outgoing chair on the agenda next. Um, Just giving well, you the table if you wanted it. Right. I didn't plan anything. Um, I think it's wonderful that we've made great progress with zoning changes lately. I would encourage everyone to keep up the good fight because... It takes, it takes people working together to make progress. And sometimes it's incremental, but it happens if we keep pushing. Um, so I would encourage you all to, to keep that up, um, to try to make planning better in the city. And that's all I've got. Uh, I think I'll just leave it at that and move on to the next item unless anyone else has any comments. Well, do you want to talk a little bit about the res like the responsibilities of the chair? <laughs> oh, you mean Might be helpful. something practical? You yeah. mean to say something practical? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, we can do that in the next item too, before we hold the nominations, but uh, let's just let's just say we move on to the, to the next item and um, and I'll introduce the topic before taking nominations. Um, well, Kirby, I'll just, I just want to mm -hmm. say thank you. I mean, you've, you've done a great job and I know it's good partnership with Mike and the rest of the planning commission, but thanks for your service and appreciate having worked with you from the time I onboarded and everything. So. Yeah. Thank you, Kirby. It was, it's been good to, I mean, I feel like I hard, hardly knew you here, but uh, I'm glad you were here for this time and for my early days on the commission, I've, I've learned a lot. So I, I do appreciate your work on this, on all of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Carlton's uh, can you hear me? There you go. Can you guys hear me? Okay. So I haven't been on the planning commission long, um, but I really appreciate you, Kirby, uh, for my own word and our, our walk around the city. Uh, you edifying my uh, my my mind to the pitched roof and flat roof uh, situation. So uh, thank you, man, for just your true honesty on breaking things down here. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh well I'm I'm sure that all of you guys will keep up the keep up the work. Um and it's not glamorous, but it's definitely I think high in fulfillment. It's worth doing. Um okay. So we'll move on to the next item. Um election of the new chair. So yeah I'll I'll start by giving folks a background of, of obviously like any anyone who has like a position like a chair can make it their own. I mean, there's there's some bare minimum stuff and that bare minimum stuff is working with Mike and and your vice chair during the week to develop what could potentially go on the agenda. We have the benefit of having wonderful staff 
and Mike usually has really great ideas for sketching out a framework for an agenda. Um, but the chair has the freedom to uh, add other things for consideration, other things for discussion. Um, you can make of it as much as you want. Uh, you can choose the approach that you want to take with uh, setting the agenda. Um, I'd say that I've been patient with things and I've been a consensus type based chair. I don't know if that's, I don't know if I would judge that as the best approach really. I don't know. That's just kind of how things went. Um, a person could definitely push harder for things they care about or try to do more work between meetings to collaborate outside the planning commission. Um, but, you know, so, so it's whether you want to be a reactive type chair or a um, proactive chair is that, you know, there's a spectrum that a person will have to choose, uh, you know, building consensus among the planning commission or being okay with different voices is, uh, you know, something that you have to decide. Uh, and then trying to lead in the areas and, and that you think are important. Um, choosing what that is from a policy standpoint can be difficult because we have a lot of different, if you look at all the different chapters of our city plan, for instance, there's a lot of areas that a person can focus on and all, all those areas have at least some tensions with other areas. Uh, so, you know, figuring that out and getting to know what, you think that the people of the city want and working on the outreach component. I think we've discovered recently that being successful as a planning commission, I think means uh, not only being aware of what the residents of the city want, but taking some steps to make sure that those people who, that the majority of people um, speak up uh, because being too complacent, which I probably was at times, if I'm being honest, I probably wasn't proactive enough in doing outreach because of a belief that there, there's a, there's a line to how political we should get right. Where I mean, we're appointees. We're supposed to be hashing out policy for the sake of the city council, but um, the, the balance of how political you are, um, not being an elected official, but being just an appointed uh, official is something that I had to think about a lot. Um, and so I probably was too passive at times because I was probably too cautious about uh, not being political or seen as the planning commission as being political because, you know, there are risks if, if it looks like the planning commission is, um, maverick then maybe we don't have as much clout with the city council uh but i do believe that we have a, a leadership role to play so being a little bit political i think is okay i think that we can if we can go out and do outreach and we you know and rally the people who want to see some good positive change done i don't think that that's a bad thing and i don't think that's going to hurt our credibility as long as we're smart about it so I would say for, I'm probably going more into philosophical than what Ariane was looking for. She was looking more for the practical stuff, but um, the practical stuff of course is just setting the agenda, um, you know, running the meetings, doing some background research on some things that, that could be coming up and offering potential solutions when we're, uh, when a problem is presented before us. Uh, I think those things are the things you have to keep in, in mind, um, being aware of the processes in the city and being knowledgeable about at least a little knowledgeable about what the DRB does, what design review does, uh, the other, you know, the other committees like, like housing and others that feed into what we do, um, at least being aware of what they do so that um so that you know how they impact what we're doing so because we don't want the planning commission to be a silo uh but from there you know 
you can take it whatever direction you want. It's also, it also requires, I think the chair requires having some thought about how efficient you want meetings to go because there's a tension between uh, efficiency and getting a lot done or hoping to get a lot done and letting people speak their minds. Um, and that's an area where I've tried to be patient about letting people it's a value of mine to have people feel like they feel heard. Uh, but there is, there is a point, you know, there's, there's a point at which it's not efficient anymore, you know? So, um, finding that balance is important, I think for the chair, because it's the chair's job to keep the meetings running and, and to keep things flowing. Um, and there's gotta be at least some, ability to, to be okay with being the bad guy sometimes if you need to, to, to keep things going. Um, so those are, those are, those are things I think that are, that any chair is going to encounter. Uh, I think, I think it's important to not make it all about yourself. And I, and I don't think that there's anybody here that would do that, but, um, it's at least, you know, possible on a board like this for the, chair them to, to make their agenda the only agenda um and you know uh, you know I, I don't think that that's that's a good approach uh or just indulging too much in pet projects and things um but it's really for somebody to figure out on their own it's going to be unique in a lot of ways for everyone do you guys have any questions before we move on Kirby, let me ask you. Um, let me let me ask you. If if you could dedicate the dream amount of time for the position, how much time would you say you'd need? Say a week, a month, what have you? Um, I mean, in an ideal world, it would be a, a full time job. It could be a full time job. I mean, you know, Mike's Mike's. Well, Mike has a lot on his plate because he's not only give like staffing us, he's staffing other committees and he's running all of the regulatory aspects of the city. Um, so if there were a policy oriented full-time job, that'd be great. Uh, but realistically being a volunteer, uh, you know, it could be an hour or two a week, or it could be if you wanted to be more dedicated, five, six hours. I mean, there's been times when we were going through the city plan that I'd spend two, three hours going over um, the submitted language and things for the plan and and then working on that. Uh, that was a skill that I thought I could bring because I do have some background in legal writing. So I um, that that was something that I did. Other people are going to have other backgrounds in which they can contribute between meetings in different ways. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, you know, between one and between one and five hours, but between meetings, I think is, is an acceptable norm. Uh, but again, you could disguise the limit with what you could do. How much, how much of it? So, you know, you mentioned some of the things that you picked up because of the skills that you possess. How much of the things that you don't do were delegated out to others? And because we're on a volunteer basis with no real, you know, money, mm -hmm. what, you know, what did you delegate out, if anything, uh, to achieve the goals to push on to the, uh, to the board? Uh, that's uh, that's a really good question because um, I'd say that I did not do a lot of delegating, but a person could. I think a person with a more extroverted skill set could probably leverage a lot of other people's skills. Um, I just personally wanted to respect people's, uh, you know, I, I was I'm thankful for any planning commissioner just just doing the meetings and putting in the effort that they want to put into, and so. I didn't feel like anybody, everyone here's the planning commissioners are all volunteer. And I, I was very careful about 
trying to force anyone to do anything beyond what they wanted. But then again, yeah, that's probably not my skill set to try to, to try to do that kind of thing. Um, so someone could leverage that better than me for sure. Um, no shade. And I think there. that's no shade at I think, all. I think that that's true for um, for all of you to keep in mind. Like if you're with this transition, is that yeah, you know, there'll be a new chair, but that's e even for the people who aren't a new chair to do what they can to help that person succeed. And um, I have no idea what you'll do with the vice chair. I don't know what Gabe's plan is, um, but um, you know, helping helping both of those roles succeed, uh, you know, that's for those of you who are maybe not interested in the chair position. Yeah. You could, you can think about what you can do for the new chair to help them. Um, I think that's great. Uh, you can, it's not all about the chair delegating it could be about other people stepping up to, to fill roles and voids. Uh, definitely would encourage you to do that. Any more questions before we move on to nominations? Uh, so I have a question for Mike. Is it is it typical that you, like, should I resign at the same time Kirby resigns? Is that typical that you just get a new slate in or how, what's typical? No, there's no certainly no requirement for that. Um, yeah, if you didn't step up to the chair, somebody else would just be stepping into the chair and you would remain vice chair. Um, to serve out the term till what is it October that we do new elections? Okay. Um, so typically that's the way that would that would work. So my question is, if someone wants to leave early, what happens? Uh, do we do an an emergency election? What what happens there? Well, that's basically the position we're in right now. Uh, Kirby was elected in October to serve a one year term as chair. Um, his workload has gotten to the point where he doesn't feel like he can dedicate enough time to be no, no, chair. No. I, under, I understand yep. that, but it, but the gentleman who spoke up stated he may want to um, want to leave as well. It, if we have something where both are up for grabs, what do we do there? We would we, we would, would probably do nominations. Yeah, we would do nominations on both. We would nominate a chair, and then we would follow that with nominations of the vice chair to fill that role. And so we would do that to, tonight. Potentially we could. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And again, I was, I was not speaking for Gabe anyway. I, I mean, I, I, my statement was, I don't, I don't know what Gabe's plan is. Um, so no, Gabe, do not feel any pressure that just because I'm doing something, we're not, we're not a party ticket or anything. You're. Oh, well, that's you're great. Rolling, I'm looking forward to supporting the new chair. I, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's figure it out. <laughs> Um, so are you leaving the commission, Kirby, or are you just not yeah, being chair? Okay. So you know, procedure, procedurally, procedurally, um, you know, Mike and I discuss this, and uh, it it's a lot easier to offboard if I hand over the reins for the chair at this meeting, and then I can resign from the planning commission after after everyone's okay. set up. That way, I can actually you know run the nomination. Um, otherwise. Mike would probably have to do it, I think. Um, so that's all. It's just a procedural thing. But but yeah, this will be my last meeting. But I'm not stepping down from planning commissioner in this meeting. I'll do that after. Any more questions? Okay. Well, at this point, I oh Brian, did you have a question before we move on? Oh no, no, no question. Okay. Uh, I will take nominations for a new chair, or uh, anyone can also feel free to just discuss the topic uh, if they don't have a nomination. And you can nominate yourself. Um, hey, everyone, I just wanted to say I'm, I uh, have appreciated my time on the planning commission for sure. I'm, I'm still relatively new. I think I'm a little over a year in and I uh, don't want to be the guy who says he's too busy to be the chair. However, I'm going to be that guy. I, I work, uh, 
I just about the time I started, I jumped in with both feet on all civic engaged things. I started a position as a secretary of state's office just about the time I started with the planning commission. And that was a brand new role for me. I'm still navigating my way through working for a public official, an elected official. I talk about partisan versus nonpartisan Kirby. That's, and I'm only about a year into that as well. And that sounds like a long time, but I still feel like I'm just, uh, I really want to be, be, I really want to be part of the planning commission because I, it would help me learn about I'm relatively, I just moved back to Montpelier want to learn about the city. It seemed like um, since we didn't do discretionary approvals, it was a little less tense and it was a way to talk about policy and the vision of the city without six hour city council meetings, for example. Um, so I really respect Carlton for jumping in on the mayoral race for sure. Respect uh, for that. Cause that is like, that's like varsity team stuff. I, but I, I would really look for someone who's been on the commission longer to, to step up. And I, I hate to be that guy, but I'm happy to nominate anyone. I just don't think I'm in a position to give this role, even though it's not a huge amount of commit, commitment, as Kirby says, I, I want to give it its fair due. And I'm just, I just don't feel like I'm in a position to do that. And I totally respect Gabe. You, I hope you'll stay on as vice chair, but I totally understand from your comments before how being chair is just in light of your work and your, your existence outside of this commission, how it would be a challenge for you. We'd love to have you as chair, but um, I totally respect your position on that. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I just want to make sure people knew I, I feel bad about it, but I just don't want to give it short shrift. I mean, here, if I, if I, if I may say the same thing, I, I second the emotion uh, that, this is all drinking from a fire hose anyway. Um, the mayoral race is uh, something to drink, uh, draw attention to a lot of issues um, that, you know, pretty much keeping it simple, we all know about. Um, I want to stay on the planning commission um, and also continue to look for a job. If this was paying money, definitely I'd consider it. But at this point, you know, the beat keeps going. Um, so Kirby, again, I appreciate everything that you do and whoever is nominated, you know, if, um, you know, they're willing to go ahead and work with everyone. Um, you know, and I'm not, like I said, passing judgment on anyone when I state that I'm just stating that, uh, I'm new to the bunch, um, and would like to, you know, foster more of a, wider frequency of dialogue uh, within the community. Uh, so if we can continue doing that, the person has my vote. That's it. So no, I'm not interested. Okay. Anyone else have uh, any comment or nomination? Well, I guess if nobody else wants to do it, I'm willing to be like, but I'd like to be co-chair with someone. I wonder if that's possible because I don't, I don't, I just don't feel like I can do as much as you've been doing, Kirby, but I could facilitate the meeting certainly and do some of that work, but I don't, I don't think I have the capacity to do all that you are doing. So I'm wondering about having a co-chair, but if somebody wants to be chair, that would be preferable <laughs> and Ariane, i i'm happy to stay on as device and i'm happy to step up a little bit more if you find that you need some help but if there's somebody else that feels like they would be a good fit with Ariane to do that to just step up a little bit i'm also happy to resign i really like serving here and and plan to be here for as long as i can be appointed next several years but um i can either help back you up or uh, step down and let somebody else do that I'm willing to, I, I would, I would willing to co-chair um, with that uh, only because it's a, it, 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 it would require more, more people. And I'm, I, like I said, I'm a rookie. Um, so someone who's been on a little bit longer and understands things, I'm certainly willing to step up if there isn't one single president available. So I'll say that uh, as an addendum. So, Mike, let me ask you: um, Is there is there a uh, a problem 
with having co-chairs? I've seen a number of committees that have done it. Um, I don't know. I think technically we would probably have one person appointed chair, one person as vice chair and just have them operate closely um, just so that way in case there's any question, not that it makes that much of a difference, but if there's ever any question when it comes to a certain vote or certain something that we would have a technical difference, but in reality, co-chairs can work pretty comfortably together. I've seen it in a number of committees and we don't have a lot of discretionary decisions to make. We're not, a, we're not hearing applications and those types of things. So okay. yeah, I don't think, don't think it'd so be a, a big issue. The way you see it, the way you see it though, would be a chair and a vice chair sharing the chair duties or so like, like having two co-chairs and a vice chair is probably not the norm. No, probably not. I mean, not for a, not for a committee of seven, we'd have three people as chairs out of and four people who are not chairs. So we'd probably just have the two. Yeah. I was just going to, I was just going to echo that. I just, I think that it, there's more benefit to just having a titular head of the committee to the commission and then having a vice chair and, you know, we can structure that however you want. And I think between the chair and the vice chair, they can divvy up those uh, this job, you know, a job role or whatever they want to do. But I think it is helpful to just have somebody who is on paper, you know, the chair, because at some point, you know, there's a pecking order that I think we need to be able to rely on and co-chairs can be a little bit messy. Um, that being said is I fully support uh, Arion as being chair. I understand. I, I get the, uh, the time limitations and whatnot, but I think you'd be a very good chair. And I think Gabe also, I think you, Arion and Gabe could, be very effective together. And I think between the two of you, I think it makes a lot of sense. So that would be my, my I, I support that arrangement, having Ariane as chair and uh, Gabe as vice. Yeah, I would. I, I, would Aaron, I thought you were going to be the chair. What happened? You got, <laughs> I think you're the most next senior person here. I, I mean, okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I, I mean, I'll just say I, I'm happy to serve in whatever capacity, you know, the commission thinks is, uh, you know, most beneficial. I mean, I will say is I'm in a similar boat as Arian. I've, I've got a small child and I'm trying to, you know, and unfortunately for better or for worse, uh, Mondays are karate is in the afternoon. So uh, I barely get here on time as it is <laughs> for most of our meetings. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, I, I'm happy to support the commission any way I can. I just think, uh, you know, Ariane's experience on the commission is she's been here just as long, if not, I think a little bit longer than I have. Um, she's up to speed on all the issues. And uh, Gabe, I think you're really effective at, you know, helping steer the group uh, and asking good probing questions and really giving us focus when we need to. So I think between the two of you, I think it makes a lot of sense. But, you know, well, if, that's. That's very kind, and karate is a is a priority too. Maria, I think everybody else has spoken about you. I think we should hear from what your thoughts are. Well, I was going to volunteer to be co chair with Ariane too, since I don't like doing the upfront stuff. I don't like running meetings because I can get too bogged down in the issues. And I think if someone's running a meeting, they need to be able to you know to be able to step back and kind of see like a longer view. Um, but I'm very happy to do you know, that one to five hours a week that Kirby was talking about. Um, I think I can find the time somewhere <laughs> in my schedule to like do all of the prep work um, and then help Ariane run the meeting. But I, you know, I don't have that skill set that I think she has. But then I don't want to take over Gabe's role. I, I kind of wish we could be co-chairs. I think we could be a good team. The thing is, I feel like we're so collaborative and Maria, you, you know, I think you have so many good points that you pull out. I, you know, again, I, I could wait until October. I could do it now. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to support Ariane and Maria and to resign uh, as the vice chair and just support. I mean, I think that that could be really great if you've got the capacity, Maria. I mean, I, I don't know how other people feel about that. I appreciate people saying nice things about, you know, me, but um I think everybody on here has been very collaborative and we've really worked through, we all have our own strengths. We have different things that we bring. And so it's, it's great. 
So, so I, I'll, I, can, I can I nominate both of them? Can I say we have a ticket of <laughs> Ariana Maria? Is that, can I do a nomination like that or how does that work? I think you have to, I think you just have to step down technically first. Well, I resign. <laughs> I officially resign. <laughs> on... So, 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 I just, so, uh, so, like so Ari to, Ariana, Ariana's chair and, uh, and Maria is vice. I see you, bro. That was my, that was the resolution, but I don't know if, if that's in order or not. Mike would have to tell me if I'm in order. That would, so that would be, wanna, we would need a I'll, nomination to approve this slate, but I know Carlton's trying to get in. Yes, I am. So I just want to, um, again, go back and say, I'd like to remove myself. I always, at, at 21 years of living here, I love, um, one of the things that I ran for mayor for was to spark the interest in a lot of things. So, um, like Aaron had stated, uh, there are other people here, uh, that probably do a better job. And um, though strapped with time, uh, may offer uh, a window of opportunity uh, for bigger uh, causes within the community that I simply want to pay more attention to um, from a non-volunteer standpoint. Um, so I, I say that long-windedly to say I, I remove myself and uh, continue to look forward to learning uh, from the standpoint I am. So can I make a resolution that we uh, that we vote on Ariane for chair and Maria for co-chair? Uh, yeah, well, um, I'll I'll look to Mike. Where Mike would it would it be better uh, to take them one at a time, or is two at a time acceptable? I don't think there's any. I'd usually lean on the Secretary of State over here and see, uh, but I don't think there's any <laughs> rules. To uh, to prohibit such a thing, um, I think yeah. usually what you do is nominate. Um, you know, Gabe would just nominate uh, a slate, and then we would look for a second of this on the slate, and then we would have a discussion and then a vote, or you know, take any other nominations. I think the question is if it was a con if there was any contested, it was if we thought that the chair was going to be a contested seat, then we should obviously do them separately. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a contested seat, and it doesn't sound like the vice chair would be contested either. So it makes sense that it would be okay to nominate the slate, take any other nominations, close the nominations, okay. and then vote. Well, I'll uh, I'll do that uh, formally then. Um, are there are there any nominations besides Ariane for the chair position at this time? Would anyone like to nominate? anyone different for the chair position. Okay. And we've had Gabe verbally resign. I don't think I officially verbally resigned except for the whole reason why we're even doing this is that that's heavily inferred. I formally resign in case that needs to be on the record uh, as chair uh, of the planning vision. Um, okay. Do we have, any nomination, we've heard a nomination for Maria for vice chair. Is there anyone else who would also be interested in serving as vice chair and work with Ariane if nominated and, and elected? Anyone? Okay. So we have a motion then from Gabe to nominate Ariane as chair and Maria as vice chair at the same time. Uh, do we have a second? I second. I heard uh, Brian slightly sooner, so we'll. we'll uh, so we have a motion from Gabe and a second from Brian to nominate Ariana's chair of the Planning Commission and Maria as vice chair. Uh, any discussion before we proceed with the vote? Anybody else have any thoughts? Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, those in favor say aye, yes, whatever. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Okay. So it looks like it's unanimous, Mike. Congratulations. Congrats. 
Thanks, you guys, for stepping up. Thank Congratulations. You so much. We'll help you. We'll step up. We'll all help you. I know, Ariana, I feel like I should draft like an agreement between us that <laughs> I can just see it on her face. She's like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like a personal kind of like I vow that I will <laughs> like feel like a co chair, you know? Well, thank you. <laughs> so I'm, I'm handing it over to you for Ariane. You're running the rest of the meeting. Okay. So, good luck All right. that. Well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Can be sorry. Uh, let me get the agenda up. Um, I think the next thing was comments from incoming chair. I don't have any comments other than yes, I'm going to need a lot of help. So thank you for all your offers of help. Um, oh, general business. Do we have any members of the public here? Don't know if Sean has any comments for general business if not i guess we can move on okay um oh yeah update on the council public hearing on zoning amendments so i think there was another city council meeting since our last planning commission meeting and it sounded like it was more just reading the little blurb in the bridge it sounded like it was a little more negative so I'd love, I, I wasn't, I didn't attend it. So if anyone attended it, it'd be great to hear more about it. Yeah. So the, we had a, a hearing, uh, the third hearing now, uh, and that was on the 13th and we made one minor change to the solar provisions because there was written text in, in the solar section that was referring to a diagram that we had removed. And the diagram had really been designed for December 21st light. And now the sun is different. So that diagram really wasn't working. So I removed the diagram, but I forgot to remove the, the two sentences. We went through and removed the sentences. And the council said that they want to be able to see those changes before approving. So we have made those changes posted them online. Um, they've been online for since the day after the hearing. Uh, we contacted, let the counselors know they were there. If they want copies, we said we would make them copies. No one has contacted us for copies. So we are hopefully ready to go for the third. So there is a council meeting in two days on Wednesday, this Wednesday, but uh, that is a meeting that's dedicated to the public works department. So we didn't want to go and have a planning thing kind of jump in the middle and push them because usually they have a lot of stuff to talk about. The meeting on the third, which is nine days from now, that Wednesday, week from this Wednesday, is when I was already going to be the, the, the main event. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of items on the agenda. So we just added the zoning hearing to that one so that will be the the third april 3rd so if anyone wants to be there for april 3rd uh you're welcome to be there either in person or on the zoom but i i um i watched the i didn't watch it live i watched it on orca after the fact but it didn't seem to me to your comment Ariane. um it didn't seem negative they, they got bogged down in the solar shading issue quite a bit, but I think that it seemed to me the council was still on board with, I mean, they wanted to pass everything. They were trying to make motions to pass everything else, but the solar, I think. And then the, oh. the decision was made to keep it all together. I think Mike is, that's how I read it when I watched the hearing, it seemed like there were, there were some concerns about the urban, about the zoning designation for, um, that you had created for, country club but that wasn't a it didn't seem like a deal breaker on moving ahead with they seemed anxious to move ahead with all the changes they just got a bit bogged down and wanted to see the final language on i think in terms of i know you're not going to give us political commentary on this but it, it seemed it seemed that they were ready to move on everything else uh, they just wanted well, to wait yeah, to thank, kind of see everything 
Thank you for that. Well, there was this, I thought there was a sentence in the bridge that said something like Councillor Heaney didn't support moving ahead or some, there was something in there that made me think, oh, this doesn't sound good, but now I can't remember what it was. It, yeah, I think, I think if I were to characterize things, there was, everybody had kind of a reason, not everybody. Um, I think there was a motion um, to approve it. Uh, it didn't get a second. I think Carrie was the one who wanted to see the final writing. Um, Adrian, that was her first meeting. I think she was just a little hesitant about, you know, this was really something everybody else had worked on and she was generally in support of. And I'm, again, I'm trying not to put words in counselors' mouths. I'm trying to interpret what I saw. Um, we were missing uh, Councillor Hurl, which may have made a difference. She had a lot of opinions. I don't remember if Palin was there, but uh, Tim Tim wanted to have more conversation about Country Club Road. So he's, you know, so each one kind of had something that was like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not ready to approve this. We'll see what comes out on um, at the next meeting. And I think if I think if I think if we get a, a motion in a second, then at least we'll get a vote. Um, and then we'll once we've got a vote, then we can see where everybody's at. And if the vote is um, to, uh, there isn't enough votes to pass, then then we can start to ask the question, OK, what what is it do we have to amend? But right now we haven't had any votes, um, no votes that approved, no votes that denied. So we were kind of left in a position of we've got to wait till we get a motion, get a second and then get a vote and see if we get three, four, two, and then once we've got that, then it's up to the mayor to decide what types of changes have to be made in order to get this across the finish line. So um, we'll, we will wait and see. Great. Um, I'll try to attend the meeting. Is it, are more people coming in person or are still most people coming on Zoom to city council meetings? Most are on Zoom. Uh, the council chambers has been cut in half, so we don't have the big chamber anymore. Uh, the back oh, half, right. the memorial room is now an office for CJC. So it is a little little more cramped, a little tighter, but um, there's there were plenty of seats at the last meeting. So it wasn't it wasn't crowded or anything, but but there's Certainly still a lot somebody of people is... on Zoom, so it's not like weird if you're on Zoom. Okay, that's that's no. what I was wondering. Okay, great. Does anyone have any other questions or comments on the city council hearing? Okay, so I guess the next thing was public input plan for the city plan. All right, so we have finally started to reach the point where we are going to start rolling this uh, city plan out. I've been working with uh, SE Group. They've been really busy wrapping up a few other contracts that they're on. They do have a bunch of work uh, that they have done, and they are getting things to me. So what we, the two of us, um, SE Group, who is our consultant and me, have been working on is really getting four chapters, or if you want, we can adjust the number. Our thought was to start with four chapters, um, get all those storyboards done and ready to go. And you've seen drafts of those storyboards. We'll, we'll polish them up, finish them up. Uh, I have another meeting tomorrow with Evelyn about putting together the implementation strategies. So you remember we did these in two pieces. We kind of have what used to be the, the chapter, the written text, have now been converted into storyboards. And we also have uh, the implementation strategies. What are our goals? Uh, what are our aspirations? What are strategies so, I, so we can accomplish them? That's in kind of another document. So we have a housing chapter, which is a storyboard, and then we have a housing implementation strategy, which are all those. Evelyn is working on how to make that graphically. How do we show that? How do we communicate that plan uh, to the public? Because it's a you know, it, it's a lot of good information in there, but it's also can be a little bit confusing and, you know, 
some things repeat themselves like uh, growth center designation may come up multiple times. So, you know, how do we, how do we show this? How do we communicate this without confusing the public? And so she's working with me on how to put that together. SE group is working with me on those four chapters. So the thought would be probably not in April because I think we're going to have some stuff keeping us busy through the month of April, but I'm looking at uh, early May or late May, depending on how things go. What are we looking at for? We would usually meet May 13th and actually May 27th is actually Memorial day. So that could be a problem. Um, but the idea is that in May, we would be able to start having public input. And then the question is going to be, what's the best way to do this? When I was envisioning this, I was always thinking this was going to be in person. We were going to find a space and maybe that's the best way to do it is that we encourage people to come in. We want to see people in person. Um, maybe we get the lower part of the senior center. Uh, they've got a large room where we could go in, we can show these storyboards, um, maybe have a couple of computers set up where people can see the storyboards. Uh, we can review them. They can look at them. And then we can have posters of the implementation strategies and we can talk through each one of them. Um, so was, that was kind of my thought was that we could have people be able to go station to station and then we could go through and have planning commissioners and staff who would be able to um, be there to answer questions, take comments, and then we can come back and have some group discussions on these. And that that's my thought is to start to feel out the public on um, the chapters. I think we, that we thought were the farthest along were uh, arts and culture, historic resources, housing, and now I'm going to draw a blank on the fourth one. I can't remember what the fourth one is, but we would have four chapters. Um, there's 11 chapters total. So the thought is we would be able to do this three times throughout the summer, maybe May and June. We'll do the same meeting over uh, twice. So we'll do it once in May and once in June, let's say. And we'll talk about these four chapters. And then we, we as a, commission can sit down and say, what did we hear? Um, how did we do, uh, you know, we didn't hear much on this chapter. We heard a lot of good things about this chapter. People thought we weren't doing a good job on that chapter. Um, and then we can start working on that while at the same time, bringing out the next four chapters and we can go and have the chapters on whatever they are, natural resource, energy, transportation, um, utilities and facilities. We would have four more chapters. And while we're taking public input on those, we're also working at our other meeting on, on making revisions to the plan that we need to make. And then we would finally get to the last three chapters. And we still have one chapter left to develop, which is the land use chapter. And I've been holding off on putting the draft together because there's a number of state laws that have been kicking around that are going to impact land use um, and how we frame land use. Uh, a lot of the Act 250 legislation is saying you've got to have these types of designations and these types. So I really want to wait, see what comes out of those bills to make sure that we can very carefully, or I can very carefully draft a good land use plan that we can all then consider as a planning commission before going to public hearing on. But as we said, we've got 10 of the 11 chapters done. Um, if we did four, four, and three, I think that would be a good way of doing it. We could also do six and five if we just wanted to break it into two chunks. Um, but the idea is we would be able to, to spend some time and everybody in the public would get a couple of bites at the apple. Um, Evelyn does a lot of work with surveys. Um, she's been doing a lot of the it's different survey type things. So we would work with her to do more surveys. And if we need more public input, we do more public input. As, as I've said, there's no, there's no maximum. It's not like, well, you can't do, you know, you can only do up to six public hearings. We can do as many as we want and we can do them as long as we want until we feel 
comfortable that we're in a good place with the document. Um, and oh, then can I ask, can we can I ask you a on. question, Mike? Yep. Right. So you mentioned the uh, the Act 250. Some of the things that uh, you're waiting on are some of the policy, the changes in Act 250. Are there any um, you know opportunities to move forward in a in a quicker manner because of uh, the Home Act? Um, and any you know in any leeway um, you know with the land use uh, in that direct, uh, given that is uh, coming online or online. Yeah, so most of the Home Act really was targeted towards the zoning side of things and less towards the the city plan side of things. So um, the city planning is in what. Well, Chapter 117 is in the 4,300s, 4, the 4,300s. And the zoning is all in the 4,400s. Most of the Home Act was in that 4,400s. You, you're required to have these and those um, uses or densities in your zoning. And we already meet all of those requirements. The few changes that have to be made are the things that are in this zoning amendment that is before City Council right now. We have a couple of small changes we have to make. And we've got those in, in that proposal. So as soon as that's passed, we will be compliant with the Home Act. Um, but the Act 250, the, the unique thing about Act 250 is that it requires in Title in um, Criteria 10, conformance with the city plan. Um, and the second piece that Act 250 has is a whole bunch of requirements that come in that say, or not requirements, but exemptions that come in and say, if you're in uh, this certain designation, you can be a tier 1A. This is the current proposal. The current proposal that's going, kicking around the state house right now, talks about tier 1A, tier 1B. Um, so you can have a part of your downtown or a part of your community that gets a tier 1A designation, which is what we would generally call the designated downtown and the growth centers. Um, and so those can get exemptions. So if you're a tier 1A, you don't have to go through Act 250 at all um, as it's currently written. Um, and then there's a tier 1B where some projects are exempt and some projects aren't. And then there's... so. Anyway, it gets very, very complicated, very, very fast. But how this yeah, relates back cool to, this, to how it relates back to the city plan is um, those designations we usually have to put into our city plan or our town plan if we were a town, and to go through and say we would like our you know this area to be we believe this area would be appropriate for a tier tier one A. So that way it can, and tier 1B, so that way it can go to the Regional Planning Commission for approval and the Regional Planning Commission can add those to their map because the Regional Planning Commission has to have a future land use map. And then if it gets approved by whatever the committee is, the NRB or the downtown board or whatever that designation is, it, there's a lot of pieces that are moving right now, but however that process gets approved. but. It really starts with the municipality saying, here's our master plan, here's our city plan, and here's where we think is the most appropriate place for that urban or that village area. Um, and so I'm kind of waiting to see, as I said, there's so many moving parts on this bill. If I knew what the end product was on the bill, I could write it right now, but there's no sense getting ahead of myself. Um, we'll wait, see what the legislature comes out with, and then make sure we write a bill that or write a, a a land use plan that dovetails well with where they want their future maps to look like. All right, so I got to go to the state house and start yelling. <laughs> if, uh, if, it's, if it's okay, I can chime in on this uh, since I work in the state house every day now and and have worked on some of these bills. Um, I can tell you, we have no idea how things are going to end up. <laughs> um, there's, there's a, there's a major housing bill coming out of the house that I've been working on and we have no idea what the Senate's going to do to it. So, you know, 
the dust isn't going to settle until May probably. <laughs> so as Mike was saying, uh, we're just, we're just not going to know. And uh, I would also add that the past two legislative sessions before this one, there was a lot of federal money because of COVID relief. Uh, that money is basically evaporated at this point. So belts are much tighter and spending on housing is much tighter, even though housing, I would say probably is right up there with top priorities. Uh, there's still a question of how much money um, is going to be spent. I would also probably just add that uh, a lot of the money that probably will end up being available, I think is going to probably run through the VHCB. Um, and they have a, like a, something like a 10 year plan uh, for housing in Vermont. Um, and the legislature seems to be taking that approach from, from everything I've seen. So if you are interested in having some glimpse of maybe what will happen in the future, I would probably look at what, whatever materials are out there for what VHCB would like to do over the next 10 years. Um, because it seems like they're going to probably be in charge of housing development at least. Thank you for that. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. Oh, sorry. I don't know. I, I'm trying to stick with protocol, but just the uh, just in terms of the public input sessions, these aren't public hearings, right? This is these are like informational sessions or open houses for the public to for us to interact with the public in some way to get feedback before this is not the formal public hearing process. Technically, yes. Yeah, there would. Okay. I, I may occasionally throw out the word saying it's a hearing, but we won't have the hearing until we have a product that all of the commission has sat down and said, we've heard from the public in our public input sessions. Um, and we're all comfortable with this and we're going to make a motion to warn the public hearing. And then we would have your one or two formal public hearings on the final product. Right. Okay. Hopefully Good. next fall or winter. Maria, you want to jump in? I was just going to say, I'd like the idea of the, is it three, three, and four? <clears throat> or three, four, and four, rather than five and six. I think just from our own experience going through these, you know, once you get past, <laughs> once you get past three, it just, you know, it's just hard yeah. to, to hold your attention for that long. Um so anyway, I just wanted to throw it out there that has, I'd support three or even more sessions um, or maybe pairing up topics that aren't as heavy with topics that, you know, are going to have a lot of public comment so that, um, you know, we can try to um, just use our time and resources efficiently. Um, like we know housing will probably be something that draws people in. Um, anyway, that's just my, my input. Oh, and then I was also going to, <clears throat> you said the senior center, we could possibly use a senior center. Um, but I could, I could volunteer our art studio downtown as a place to hold the meetings too. Um, it's ADA accessible and we are used to holding events there. So, you know, just throwing it out there. Yeah, this certainly could be nice. Uh, thank you. Uh, certainly if we're doing um, the arts and culture chapter with something else, it would might even be appropriate to kind of fit it into that, that venue. That would be good. And as Maria said, we can certainly break it down into smaller groups. If, you know, if we were thinking, you know, we've got two meetings a month. Maybe we do two chapters a month. You know, you know, the first meeting is two chapters and then we can talk about it and then we can do two chapters and it would take us six, six months to do the entire plan. But 
then we're focusing on fewer chapters, smaller chapters, uh, as opposed to trying to have people digest four chapters, they'd only have to digest two. It just draws that window out a little bit longer. Um, so we can certainly do um, fewer fewer chapters with each one, and but that might mean we only have one. So let's say we do art and housing for the May meeting, uh, we might end up with just having one meeting on that and maybe the public wants more than one, but then you start doubling that and you start doing, well, let's do two meetings. Then this is taking more than a year to get through the, the discussion process. And I, I think we would want to be not taking a year. I think taking six months is, is more than fine for having a lot of discussion, but I think getting, getting at more than a year would be more of a problem, but Just ideas. Yeah, this, so. end, this is officially your process. So, I was just going to say, I mean, can we, because I feel like May 13th isn't as far away as I think it is. Um, I mean, can we start reserving a space or deciding on a space? I don't know exactly what the process would be for that, but I feel like, a, yeah, if. And I assume SE Group will do the storyboards for us, the displays. Yeah, I'm thinking we'll probably try to do some computers. Maybe they're just laptops. You know, it'd be great if, you know, if we had some setup where there was, you know, something with slightly bigger monitors, I might work with our IT folks to see if we can either Wi-Fi connect or cable connect laptops up to bigger computer screens so we can actually go through them and, and there can be multiple people viewing them. Um, but I'll have to talk to them about that process. But yeah, I think that was the idea is we could theoretically print out the storyboards, but I think the point is for people to try to see them digitally because that's what the product is supposed to be. Yeah, well, I definitely would like to, I mean, I don't want to rush things, but I would like to plan on having that, you know, hearing on May 13th. Um, and I guess Mike, just let us know what we need to do in order to make that happen. Um, but I, I don't know what the senior center space looks like. Um, I know Maria because I pick up my daughter there that the Wilder Art Studio can be. I, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to clean up because I presume we're going to have it. We would have it at like 530 on a Monday. So that could be a tight turnaround from any after school bus. But uh, we would we would clean up for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's not our problem because we have classes going every evening now. So we have to flip the studio around anyway. So it's fine. Um, but I was going to add that I think having maybe having two is a bit too few for one session. I think the three is like a really good number. I don't know what other people think. Um, I mean, having this go for a half year just seems so long to me, but I'm curious to hear what other people think. Compared to where we've been with this, six months is nothing. <laughs> so yeah, that would really look at a four four groups of public hearing. So we'd have three on, you know, a, a three, 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 and then two for the last one. And we could take it by ear, play it by ear. If we have a, a hearing on transportation, energy, and utilities and facilities, those three actually kind of go together. Um, maybe we take public comment. We don't hear a lot, and we don't need to have a second meeting on that one. Um, maybe housing, we get a lot of uh, input, and people decide, You, the commission decide, We'll have a second meeting on that one, or we'll get through all, all of them and go through and say, you know what, 
we've heard from everybody in the input. We've gotten everybody's input. Now we're going to have the public hearing and we expect that we're now going to, you know, those same issues that came up, we tried to address them and now we're in the public hearing. And then in the public hearing, that'll just go until whenever we'll, we'll, we'll be having a hearing with all 11 displays out at once and having people make comments and we will continue to have hearings until we feel like we've got a product that you're willing to say, I make a motion to pass this to the city council for consideration. And then it goes off to them kind of similar to how we do the zoning. You'll, you'll reach a point where you're like, I think, I think this is, you know, we don't want to let perfect be the enemy of the good. So we're going to move this to council and let them have their, their shot at it. And hopefully we, get that up to them in a good window of time that either it's just before or just after the election next year. And it, it's difficult if it crosses over an election because you could get new people. So usually you want to hopefully get it in. So they're adopting it before or they're getting it and they're going to hold it till after, but we'll see for their hearings. But that sounds like a good approach. I will target three boards um, for May 13th, and we'll make sure one of them is art. Just, and I think the next one is going to be housing. And I'm going to say it's going to be art, housing, and historic, just because I think those are very straightforward. Um, their housing is very important. Um, and I think we can get good good input and we'll get a sense of how the process is going to go. And maybe the process turns into a big train wreck and we've got to reconsider how we do this, or maybe it all goes perfectly fine. I never know how this goes until you're in the middle of a, you know, in, in the middle of a big meeting, but hopefully, like I said, we'll, we'll do a lot of outreach on those, start letting people know that's when we're going to start having public input on the city plan. And, um, I will get you guys at the one of our next meetings in April. Uh, I'll bring the final storyboard so you guys can get a chance to look at what's going out there. Again, when I say final, everything is draft. They can change at any point. All we need is a motion from someone to say, change that, and it gets changed. So um, we'll get those up to you guys for the, one of your next meetings coming up. So I think that's about as much information as I needed to get from you guys so I could start to to work with Evelyn and work with SE Group to move this forward. Um, good ideas. And um, I'll be in touch at the next meeting and start going okay. over things. So is that a good segue to should we meet on Eclipse Day? <laughs> <laughs> would be the next me so i'll be bringing this to the next meeting the question is is the next meeting the eighth or is the next meeting the 22nd i mean Isn't it I... the national holiday the eclipse day <laughs> <laughs> eclipse day might as well be it really depends i don't know what the weather is going to be like and that's going to be the 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 big ringer for everything um i have a bunch of family who want to come up uh, my family's from connecticut and so they're all driving up to stay for the eclipse, which is from like two to four on that Monday. So I'm probably, I'm definitely not going to be available if they're up for the eighth. But if the weather's rainy, then it's just going to be a cloudy day with rain that gets dark and then gets light again and then gets dark. In which case they're not coming up all that way even, even if it's even if it's cloudy even if it's completely overcast it's still really cool it's still so, a big event yeah it's still it's still spooky so you're you mike you said you wouldn't be available the night of eight if my family comes up i definitely okay. would not be but i don't know how many other people i know schools have been canceled um and i don't know if a lot of other people are like hey i i'm gonna be busy partying it up and enjoying the eclipse and I'm going well, to just, be I'm going to be partying I'm going to be partying it up and enjoying the eclipse so I will not be there on the eighth. 
Oh, okay. Wow. I was going to say, I think we should meet because the course will be over, but I guess I'm not, <laughs> I'm not having enough fun on class day. <laughs> I know. I feel uh, like I'm going to be homebound. There's no school. There's no work. <laughs> like I will right. be. Right. They're saying stay off the roads. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But um, I don't know if Aaron can. Well, I'm it. just noticing that the other Monday meeting in April is like school vacation, which I don't know if anyone's traveling for that. But can we reschedule for another day that in April or? Is April 22nd going to be enough? Will there be enough of us? And is that enough time to like get ready for the May 13th meeting? So I won't be there on the 22nd either. Okay, see. <laughs> um, any, I mean, uh, we can push stuff to the 9th. I mean, rather than meeting it, it, when there are holidays for people who haven't been here for a long time, like Memorial Day, we'll have that conversation. But usually there's a lot of people taking long holidays when it comes to Memorial Day. But some holidays, President's Day will come up. Bump Planning Commission will push it to a Tuesday instead of a Monday, and we'll just meet on Tuesday instead. We could certainly do that for the Eclipse Day and just say we're going to meet on the 9th. Um, I think that would be an RPC board meeting, which I was going to mention because oh yes, I, I don't want to be also... in the RPC anymore. If I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> that and was I the other to... one I was going to mention. Yeah. Um, that Ariane's also. It's very unusual to have the the planning commission chair also be on the RPC board of directors. So we'll probably have to look for a replacement there. I am the alternate, so for now it's not a big deal if Ariane resigns. Um, we'll just have to start having a conversation about who would like to. Be it's typically a planning commission member that sits on the board. So folks can think about if they want to meet. It's about once a month. They do try to drag you into being on another committee um, because they do have a lot of subcommittees. So you usually end up as a board member once a month, 10 meetings a year, um, second Tuesday. And then usually they get you on one of the subcommittees as well. Um, so I'm on the regional planning commission regional plan rewrite committee. Um, but there are a number of other committees that they usually try to get you on to. So that's just an idea. Um, think about it and we could talk about it. We'll put it on the next agenda for, um, getting somebody on as a replacement to Ariane, but that also puts us on back onto the, um, whether we want to meet on the ninth, um, I mean, so I guess I would won't... favor meeting on the 9th, but does that mean someone has to miss it to go to the RPC meeting, or can we all skip the RPC meeting for April? Well, I'll just let them know that we're going to have to skip it because we're going to be appointing a new person. Okay. Um, just because you won't be available because you're not going to be, you're going to now be chair, and I won't be able to because I'm staffing the meeting. So until may we'll have to they'll have to wait and whoever we pick we will have to go to city council to appoint so there's going to be a little bit of a process that's going to go along with this and does everyone feel okay about meeting on the ninth yeah that sounds good okay good i'm, I'm okay with it I, uh, so, I may not be able to attend, but I'm not going to let, don't let me hold it up. Sounds like we've got a, you've got a quorum for that day. Okay. That's good. So the idea is we're going to be meeting on the 9th. Okay. Excellent. All right. That question's answered. Okay. Um, okay, so great. I think the last thing we have is considering the minutes of March 11th and I don't see the meeting minutes for January 22nd, but maybe those were in a previous email. Uh, they were probably in a previous email and I didn't send them. Okay, well, we can, I don't know if somebody wants to make a motion to approve the minutes of March 11th once we've had a chance to look at them 
we could at least start with that. I'll move that we approve the minutes since I haven't gotten to do something like that in a long time. Okay. All right. Is there a second for Kirby's motion? Maybe they but, need more time. Nope. Oh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, I'll second it for sure to approve the minutes. Okay. All those in favor of passing the March 11th minutes, say aye. 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 And then do I say any opposed? Do I any opposed? Okay. Any yes. opposed? All right. Um, and then uh, should, should we, do you want to resend those January minutes or? I'll, I'll, I'll put know. them on the next, I'll put them okay. on the next agenda and I'll make sure to, to attach them. Okay. We were kind of rushing to get the agenda assembled last week and, uh, that one didn't get attached. Okay. Great. So I think we just need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Does somebody need to second that? Did Carlton second that? <laughs> I second that. Okay. <laughs> so right. just Everyone. just so you get in get in the habit of um, and. Kirby does it and other folks have done it just for the audio tape. Usually what we'll do is just restate who, who it was okay. that was Aaron made the motion or Brian made the motion and Carlton seconded that helps um, okay. Tam who does our minutes because okay. sometimes she can't see who it is. Right. Okay. So Aaron made the motion and Carlton seconded to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Bye, everyone. I, I sent my resignation letter in, so. Thanks, Kirby. Luck. See you, Kirby. Thanks, uh, Kirby. You, hey, go out, there, go out there and recruit my replacement, okay? Yeah. Um, that's an important, that's my that's my last tip as I exit. Yeah, it'll get, okay. so we'll get it posted. I'll work with Mary. She will get it posted in the paper, um, and that may take a couple of weeks to for it to get to council and then council will appoint a replacement for the remaining portion of Kirby's seat, which I will have to find out whether that is six months or 18 months, but I will figure that out. All right. Have a great solar day. <laughs>